the uh, artist, the writer can. Um, just the thing of all the manga and comic, um, due to the, pro uh, the fact that production of comic manga is very immediate, uh, you don't really need publisher or producer to pr uh, make comic. You and your paper, and thanks to internet, you can have more readers uh, than you could imagine before. Uh, it makes it more uh, accessible to people, and uh, that's how it made uh, comic um, even before the internet. Just, just the fact that with Xerox and pen and paper, you can reach many people, uh, make comic very subversive uh, material. Um, and like Daniel Klaus is one of the most uh, influential alternative cartoonists in America. I said like comic is uh, eat of society. Like uh, we discussed before, the comic tends to express what people cannot easily say, and that how um, make uh, how comic to happen. Um, Top, uh, top medium for subversive uh, movement. Many. So yeah, my that's it. Manga doesn't really have <laughs> one. On the other hand, just like in the United States, the manga publishers in Japan certainly have count a certain line, even if they, it, it's not a political line, um, they may have content restrictions uh, and art restrictions. So if one is working for a major uh, manga publisher in Japan, uh, and it's easily told by the brand under which that particular title is published, you can see that, you know, a uh, Shonen Jump title uh, shows certain aesthetics versus a Shonen Sunday title versus a Shonen Champion title, and those are all different from, say, Shoujo titles. So there, there are subtle, more subtle, I think, um, maybe not political, but certainly statements that are made through various comic books in Japan as well. And just the same as in the U.S., I mean, I think we, we barely scratch the surface of the genres that exist in manga and anime. Uh, the point about the whole apocalypse and ap apocalyptical subject matter in anime, I think it, it, it reflects more of what comes over to the United States than what exists just in Japan. Certainly, you know, action titles are just as big in the box office in Japan as it is in the U.S., but it barely scratches the surface. Um, and the same with independent comics here in the U.S. Certainly, you know, maybe for a very long time, all you had were either superhero comics or Archie and, and Garfield. But I know that one of the comics, like American comics, I grew up with, which was the Elfquest series by Wendy and Richard Penny. Yeah. Wendy Penny was heavily influenced by Tiska and other manga artists, and she was drawing from the 70s. Very smooth, um, Japanese-like art in, in her books. And for a while they were even published in Marvel, so it wasn't as independent as other titles that were, and other artists that were influenced by the whole movie script, I'm using. Uh, well, as for Art Crumb, I think he's, you know, a great artist, but uh, I feel like his style, like, you immediately know that he's trying to say something, like, kind of hits you over the head with it. And I think that maybe you can be more subversive with a cute drawing and maybe kind of sneak some political content or some of your ideals in there without people realizing it as quickly. So um, I kind of think that's something that interest interesting that can be done with manga um, that, you know, isn't, that I guess it's an original thing that, that we could do. Uh, for me, growing up, I wasn't exposed to uh, how it comes art. Uh, it wasn't until I was older, maybe at the end of high school, being in college, and I learned more about um, the different artists that I was exposed to. I think for me, it kind of fell out of my league. And um, his style was not like uh, Jun's and not, you know, my cup of tea, but it was one of those things where I saw how, you know, he was trying to make a statement. And it's just, you know, it, you just get it. And um, for, for the art that I do now, uh, manga and the style that I do has been gaining popularity over the years. And I think not as much as the political.